Today's lecture, we'll be talking about the greenhouse effect and global climate change, also called global warming. Uh, my purpose, the purpose of the lecture today is not to convince you of my opinion or get you to believe what I think. It's also not to convince you of a specific opinion. I'm not trying to convince you that global climate change is something to worry about. I'm not trying to convince you that it's not something to worry about. We're just going to talk about the facts today, the things that we can prove with science. Before we can really discuss global warming, we need to talk about where does this energy that warms the planet come from. And we know that it comes from the sun. The sun, warm, the sun warms us up. Uh, since the sun is a black body, we need to review a couple of terms, namely what is a black body. So I think we've used this term before. Well, I know we've used black bodies before that term, but uh, there's a nickname for black body. Oftentimes we call it a perfect emitters. Uh, black bodies are perfect emitters. And uh, I think we've said that before in class. The definition of a black body, though, is something that never reflects any light. It does not reflect light. Instead, it always absorbs all incident light. Okay, so all, all light that comes off of it, like so all energy that comes off the sun, was emitted by the light. It's a perfect emitter. None of it was bouncing off and came from somewhere else. The area under these graphs is considered the intensity. Intensity is a term you need to know. It is defined as the amount of power emitted per unit area. Okay, here's the equation. This equation is found in your IB data booklet. A good way to think about intensity is if you do something like take a flashlight and shine it on a piece of paper that's really close, that flashlight or that light will be really bright. If you take that piece of paper and you move it farther away, you'll notice that the paper doesn't look as bright. That's because it's the same power or the same energy coming from the light bulb, from the flashlight. It's just being spread out over a larger surface area. So therefore, it is not as intense or not as bright. So if we want to actually calculate the intensity of a light, like for example, we want to calculate the intensity of sunlight on the surface of the earth, we first need to be able to calculate the power, right? Intensity is power per unit area. So before we can calculate intensity, we need to know the power. Um, we've seen that the hotter something is, the more intense it will be. That's because the hotter something is, the more power it will emit. There is an equation to calculate how much power a black body radiates, okay? The equation is this, a radiated power emitted by a black body like the sun is equal to some constant called Stefan Boltzmann's constant, which is right here. This constant can also be found in your data booklet, times the surface area of the black body, so the surface area of the sun, if that, that was what we were calculating, and then the temperature of that black body. So, and make sure you always measure that temperature in units of Kelvin. This equation is also found in your IB data booklet, okay, under topic eight. Keep in mind though that black bodies aren't the only thing that emit ele or electromagnetic radiation. The sun gives off electromagnetic radiation from all spectra. So from all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that includes light, right? The sun gives off light, it gives off radio waves, it gives off ultraviolet, infrared. Uh, microwaves, x-rays, gamma rays, all these different wavelengths of light, it will give them all off, okay? However, other objects also emit electromagnetic radiation. I do, the earth does, everything does, okay? It will emit energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. However, if it's cold or relatively cool, like we are or like the earth is, it will emit radiation in the infrared spectrum which your eyes cannot see. So when we turn off the lights, you, you will, I will be emitting electromagnetic radiation. However, you will not be able to see it because it's not visible light. It is infrared. So because of this, we give off energy as well, but, oh, and so we can actually calculate how much energy we also give off with this same equation. Anything that's a non-black body will also give off energy with this equation. However, the energy is going to be slightly cal calculated slightly different because we are not a perfect emitter we emit less so to calculate how much we will emit less what we do is we simply multiply this equation this part right here by a number to decrease the amount that the power is giving off so we're going to multiply it by a number e we'll call it and that number has to be less than one so e is called the emissivity and it ranges between one and zero if it's one that means it's a perfect emitter or in other words that it's a black body that's why with a black body the e just drops off okay this equation will also be found in your yellow packet or sorry your uh, ib data booklet it's kind of silly that they give you both of these equations one with an e one without an e 
This one is meant for black bodies. This one is meant for everything else. However, uh, the MS, you can still use this one. You just make the emissivity one when it's a black body. So it's kind of silly they give you both, but they do. Emissivity has a specific definition. It is defined as the ratio of the power emitted from, uh, by an object to the power emitted from that or the power that would the object would have emitted if it was a black body, right? So it's the ratio of what it could have potentially emitted if it was a true perfect emitter versus how much it actually emits. So they calculate how much they theoretically should have emitted, and then they actually measure how much it does, and the ratio of those two is considered its emissivity. It's basically a percentage of how well it is emitting. So you can see from this graph, right, this might be the black body curve. So this is if it was a certain temperature, this is the shape of the intensity uh, per wavelength, right? However, if it was not a perfect black body and it had an emissivity of 0.8, then everything just decreases. The whole thing just goes down and shrinks and then it's smaller. This is not because it's a cooler temperature. It could still be the same temperature, but it's not emitting the way it should. It's not giving off the same amount that it should. Therefore, the emissivity is a little bit lower and the graph just shrinks. Or if it's only 20%, uh, the emissivity is only 20% or 0.2, then right, it shrinks even more, and it's the same shape. The peak doesn't shift over anything. It's the same exact shape, just smaller. Let's try a quick practice problem. If the sun has a radius of 6.96 times 10 to the 8th meters, which it actually does, and a temperature of 5,778 degrees Kelvin, then how much power does the sun radiate? Okay, in order to keep this, uh, you can pause it and try and solve this, but to solve it, just keep in mind that we're going to use the same equation we actually did before, or we just discovered, right? Except that it, since the sun is pretty much a black body, we're going to plug in 1 for the emissivity, right? And that's just going to pretty much go away. Also keep in mind for the area, you're finding the area of the sun, and the sun is the, in the shape of a sphere. So you have to use the equation for the surface area of a sphere, which hopefully you remember. If you can't remember, it is 4 times pi times the radius squared. Okay, so go ahead and pause it and give it a try and see what you can calculate. Once you've done so, you will find that the surface area turns out to be 6.09 times 10 to the 18th square meters. And then when you take this surface area and you plug it into the equation, you will find that the answer should be 3.85 times 10 to the 26 watts. So that means that it is the sun is giving off 3.8 time, 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules every single second. That's a whole lot of energy.